All right, everyone, welcome to my live, guys. You're watching Rome Knows Tech, and I'm your host, Rome Wilkerson. I can see my man, Alan's already here. Good afternoon, oh, yeah. Alan. How are you? Good to see you. What's going on? Man, I have had one doozy of a day. So this morning I got up, went downstairs, turned the television on. It gave me that little message. You know the message you get when the Wi-Fi's down or the Wi-Fi's been down or so I'm like, okay, well, something's weird's going on. So I went over to the laptop, flipped it open. That was the same type of message for Wi-Fi being down. I'm like, oh my goodness, what is going on? I looked over at the router, two green lights, two green lights. So I'm like, okay, well, that doesn't make any sense. Maybe it happened in the middle of the night and, you know, just the computer and the television didn't catch up with it. No big deal. So I spent the majority of the day on hold waiting for tech support from AT&T. I mean, the majority of the day. Because they had me to reset the modem, which I did, no problem. You know, I'm used to doing that. Reset the modem. Well, then there's a problem. Because now I don't have that normal separation between my, you know, 5.0 and my 2.4 so that like some of my devices in the house are on 2.4 other devices you know like my streaming devices my computers are all on that 5.0 so i needed to be able to separate those you know from my high speed internet to just my you know moderate speed internet yeah that didn't happen it literally took me hours and hours and hours to finally just give up on it so i'll try again tomorrow and see if uh, i can get in touch with someone over there that can help me set this up the proper way now, I understand that there is an easier way to do it with the uh, phone app. I've never done it that way, and I don't want to take a chance of making it worse. So I'll probably do a little bit of research on it tonight. If there is an easier way to do it, just using my phone app, I'll probably get that taken care of tonight. But that's that's kind of what my day was like. So <laughs> I didn't get much done. I actually was planning on going to ship out <clears throat> uh, Brandy T's package because it was sent back to me. I reboxed it, got it ready to go out and everything. And I'm like, okay, well, that's what I'm going to do this morning because I actually reboxed it last night. And I'm like, yeah, okay. So when I get up, you know, make my coffee, check my emails, jump in the truck, you know, head on over to the UPS store and ship out her little package. And uh, yeah, none of that got done. So, you know, that's what it was like. That's what it was like. So I am also seeing right now, which looks like, and let me check. Uh, I'm just trying to be sure. Yeah, it looks like the viewer counts on everybody's account has just dropped tremendously because if Tyler is down like in the 50s, and let me just see who else is live right now. I'm just trying to get a get a feel for what's going on. It doesn't matter, guys. I'm going to be here regardless if it's five people or if it's a 500. You know what I'm saying? But I am curious sometimes is what I'm seeing. Well, maybe it's not that bad. Maybe it's just, you know, right here for now. So we'll see if the numbers go back up. Not a big deal. You know, I don't sweat that. If it's just one of you guys hanging out with me, Evans, 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 what's going on? Hey, Evans. You know what? I was just thinking about you because I did not get a chance to send your gift card. Because <sighs> I was having all kind of Wi-Fi issues today. And, yeah, so that happened. So... Now, we're going to do it. We're going to make it happen right now. All right, Evans, we're going to make that happen, like, literally right now. Let me check my email. Uh, my Wi-Fi was down earlier, and then I ran into some other Internet-related problems. Uh, let me see if you did send the email over to me. I'm not seeing it. Hold on. I'm pretty sure you sent it, so let me check. Ah, there we go. Evans. There we go. Evans. And let's see what Evans did. Evans did not. <laughs> Evans, you didn't send me your actual email address. So I can't respond to just your email. I need your, your actual email address. So what I'm going to need you to do is to send me another email, but just type your email in the body of the email so I can just copy it Take it over here to Am bring it over here to Amazon, and then I'd be able to send off a gift card to you. Okay? Uh, yep. Yeah, so uh, I will need to resend it. Yes. So you can just send me another email at the same email address, contact at pod1media.com, 
and I will then copy it over and send that gift card off to you right now while we're live, while we're ri while we're live right now. All right, guys, so we're going to kind of start this stream off kind of like we did yesterday. We're going to talk a little bit about some of these Ozbot cameras and some of the accessories that were sent to me over the last few days. <clears throat> Let's see, Vicky's also in here. Good to see you, Vicky. Welcome, welcome. All right, all right. Okay, so we're going to take a look at these cameras real quick, guys. Like I said, this has been a long day, so I don't really plan on, you know, dragging this stream out very long. It'll probably last about an hour, 15, hour and a half, something like that. Whatever it takes to, for me to get through the carousel. And of course, you know, if anybody has any questions, I will stop to answer those questions. So don't fret. That's what I'm here for. All right, so let's take a look at this. Uh, let's go ahead and just jump over to our little quick little side by side. As you guys can see here, we have we have a number of different items from Ozbot. We have the PTZ camera, which is the Ozbot Tiny 4K PTZ. They actually sent me two of these. The one I already had for quite some time. They sent me a second one. I think I'm going to use that as a giveaway item. They also sent me this new camera here, which is the Ozbot Meet. And they also sent me their UVC to HDMI adapter. So we got a lot of things that were sent out to, to your boy Rome here to take a look at and test. But before I get into that, Evan says she just sent the email. So let's go ahead and take care of that real quick. So let me go back over to my email and see if Evan sent me an email. She said she did. I do see it. So let me copy that entire email. And I can close that now. All right, we're back over here on Amazon. So let me go over here to my little storefront. And we're going to find gift cards. All right, so there's our gift card. Oh, da, 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 da. There it is. All right, so let me, as you know, I told you guys last night was a very, very small uh, giveaway because we really didn't have that many people <clears throat> last night, but you know, I did want to give you guys something. Um, so the way we're going to start doing this guys going forward, you know, my goal is to hit, you know, 10 new followers per day. So that can be a combination of my AM or noon and my PM live stream. So if we get a total of 10 people, 10 people, new followers between those two live streams, we're going to do a gift card giveaway on the PM live stream. Okay. So that's all it takes. That's all it takes. You know, um, yourselves, others, people who are, you know, wanting to participate in these type of giveaways. Man, bring your friends. Bring your friends. Bring them over. Now, of course, I still say the same thing, and I've been saying this for quite some time, guys. I honestly, honestly want people who are interested in the things that I talk about. I really want to, to build an organic type of uh, community here. So we're all talking about uh, things that we're passionate about, you know, whether that's tech, photography, videography, retouching, you know, whatever it is you guys are into, I'm probably into it too, especially if it's tech related, photography related, video related. If you guys want to see some tutorials on, you know, Photoshop, Final Cut, Link, you know, any of those type of uh, applications that I use pretty much on a daily basis. You know, in the beginning, when I first started streaming here, I used to do a lot of Photoshop re uh, retouching. Uh, live here on the channel. So if you guys are still interested in that kind of stuff, I'll find a way to incorporate that into the live streams. I see rising sirens in the house. All right. So uh, yeah, so rising siren and others whom all may be here. Joanne, I think I missed you. Welcome. All right. So that's what we're going to be doing, guys. So if we can get those numbers every day, we will have a gift card giveaway each and every single night. All we need is 10 new followers per day. All right. So let's rock it. OK, so again, guys, we're going to talk about these cameras real quick. Of course, we have seen multiple times. You guys have seen me use the Ozbot PTZ camera. Uh, I don't even know where it is right now because I was actually doing, um, I did a couple of shoppable videos this morning while my Wi-Fi was out. Rome stayed productive. Yes, I still made some shoppable videos, even while I was, you know, didn't know I was going to get to upload them, but I did them anyway.
So yeah, I was thinking of some funny stuff to do here, like some green screen little antics. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that here a little bit later. All right, so this is the Osbot PTZ camera. And also, guys, you know that I was also sent the Meet. This is their other little camera. This is the Meet AI. This camera here has a lot of the similar features to the Osbot, except for the fact that it does not physically move. This is an all metal little construction for this camera. Uh, hopefully you guys can see this pretty well. It does, somebody mentioned last night that it reminds them of like one of the older um, action cameras. Yeah, it does kind of have that, that look to me as well. You know, of course there's no screen on the back. Uh, the only thing on the back is just the USB-C plug where you plug this in. Now, if you guys were here last night, I was actually using this camera as one of my cameras here in the studio. And I can connect this camera literally right now to uh, my Yolo box. And I'll show you guys what I mean. I'm just going to plug it in. I'm just going to plug this camera in. The Yolo box should automatically see it. Uh, give it a second to see this little camera. And once it sees it, if it's going to see it. Let's see. Yep, there it is. Now it sees that camera. Make sure that didn't mess up my audio. Guys, let me know if that did mess up my audio or anything, but hopefully it didn't, but I'm going to switch over. So now you guys can see I'm just using that little um, Osbot camera, the Osbot Meet, right here in the stream. I have it connected to the Yolo box with the USB-C cable. And you know what I like about this camera, guys, look how close Look how close I can get to a subject, you know. That's pretty cool. Plus, it's tiny. This is a tiny little camera, okay? So if I go back over here, so you guys can see how close I can get to this camera and still be able to focus on something. Now, in comparison, like I said, this is a very, very tiny camera. Um, I think this is going to be ideal for someone who is live streaming, gaming, you know, doing conference calls or something like that. Now, this does come with a magnetic base, so the magnetic base, you know, obviously allows you to connect this right on top of your laptop screen or your computer monitor, and you'll have the camera facing you. Now, it does have some similar features, guys, to the um, to the Osbot camera, meaning that it does have like a digital type of panning and, and uh, tilting effect, kind of like the Osbot does. But it's not quite the same, you know, because the Osbot is a very physical camera. You know, it can physically move in different directions and it can pan and tilt up and down uh, as well. But this one gets pretty close to it from a digital perspective, right? So I'm going to go ahead and set this camera back up the way it was last night. Uh, let's see, what do I need to make this work? I need a tripod and I need some type of cold shoe mount. So let me find one and connect it. So earlier today, I was doing a couple of shoppable videos on these lights, and I, I was just amazed at the fact that I had never done a video on these lights, even though I talk about these things literally daily. So I'm just going to use the same little mount that comes with those lights. I'm just going to attach it here to the Osbot meat, and I'm just going to wrench this down a little bit so it doesn't move around and lock that in place. And then I'm going to take one of my little, um, one of these little Yulanzi, uh, little tripods and I'm going to connect that to it. Now that'll make it easy for me to mount this camera and to be able to set it up on the desk or to just hold it, you know, hand hold it like this, you know, almost like a little handle. And when I want to show you guys things, I can just pick this camera up really easily. So again, like I said before, I have all of this stuff right now connected to the Yolo Box Pro. Uh, and this is the cable right here that is connected in through the USB-C uh, port that is allowing me to connect this camera directly to it. Now, the USB-C, uh, the USB port, I currently have connected to the, Ro uh, the Rodecaster Pro 2. So that's how I'm getting audio in. So the audio that's coming in that you guys are hearing is coming right off of the Rodecaster Pro 2. So anyway, so let's talk a little bit more about these cameras and some of the other things that uh, Osbot sent over to me. So I'm just going to set this camera down for now and then switch back here. All right, guys, so another thing that they sent me was this um, UVC adapter. Now, what this UVC adapter does is it allows you to connect a USB camera, maybe one like this, or one of the other cameras that you may already own, to something like a video switcher. That could be a Roland switcher, that could be the Ninja Cast, that could be, you know, any number of other, you know, digital switchers that you might want to use, but most of those require you to have 
a camera that has HDMI out in order for it to connect to it. So in the past, there was no easy way to connect one of these USB cameras to one of those specific type of switchers. Now I know this is a special type of case scenario, but what this device will do is allow you to do exactly what I just described, right? So in the box, and I just found the um, manual on the ground just a second ago, and now I don't know what I did with it. And Rising Siren wasn't here to remind me to put the manual back, back in the box. But this is the little teeny tiny manual that came with it. So there's that. Now, the actual device, I did go ahead and put it back in the box. But this is the device right here. So let's go ahead and just pop this out real quick so you guys can take a look at it. So this little uh, small compact device is what's going to allow you to connect your USB camera to your switcher, okay? So on this side, we have our standard HDMI out. That's what's going, you're going to just plug in an HDMI cable, then plug that cable into your switcher. Now on this side, you're going to, you have the ability to plug in your USB camera. You can also plug in the dongle for the remote for the Osbot cameras. And you can you're gonna have to plug in another cable here for power. So this does have to be powered. So you will need two USB-C cables. One is gonna be connecting to your camera. The other one's gonna be connecting to your power bank. And then the third uh, USB-A that's in the center there is what you would plug your uh, dongle into. Let me show you guys what that little dongle looks like. Uh, let me grab it. So this is the little dongle. Okay, I don't know how well the camera is going to focus on that. Let me see if I can get it to focus on it. But this is the little dongle uh, right here. And then this just plugs in like this. Uh, let me get it straight. It just plugs in like that. And then you'll be able to control the cameras with your remote. So if you're plugging in something like the Osbot, the little PTZ camera, or maybe you're plugging it, this into uh, the Osbot Meet, or maybe one of their other cameras, uh, I got these cables all kind of mixed up. Hold on. Let me unplug. them back on now it looks like the audio is coming through you say no sound okay give me a second let me check it because maybe 
Okay, so I'm hearing audio. I'm hearing audio. Okay, so I switched it off. So let me go ahead and mute this. Okay, so it could have been when I connected the camera because I connected the camera afterwards. The camera took over the audio because this is a USB device. So that was interfering with the uh, roadcaster. So hopefully now the audio should be back. So if the audio is back, let me know, guys. Uh, but I do still have that camera connected. You know, we're live. So, you know, crazy things happens when you're live. <laughs> All right, so everyone, just let me know if you're hearing the audio without any problems. Uh, I, that was my bad because I did plug the camera in after uh, going live and then plugging it in, you know, obviously uh, because both devices are plugged in and connected do, through the USB. Uh, one of them probably took over the other one, and then we lost audio from our uh, Rodecaster Pro. So if you guys are hearing audio right now, let me know that you are hearing audio. Um, or I can either go back to my computer and check. Okay, let me just go back and check because nobody's typing anything in the comments right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and check real quick. Uh, yep, okay, so audio is back. Sounds like the audio is good. And I still forgot to put this little manual back in this box. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, of course, I'm probably not going to be giving this item away. I will find some practical use for it, you know, going forward. Now, luckily, all of my devices now currently will support a, uh, you know, a USB camera. You know, the Yolo boxes support USB cameras, and those are the you know one of the devices that I'm using most frequently for live streaming right now. So, but if you guys are thinking about it, this could be an excellent, excellent little camera for you for streaming, for content creation, for gaming, or whatever the case it is. I do like the fact that this one is metal. I'm a big fan of that. Now, this new UVC uh, adapter is plastic, and then the Osbot is also plastic, you know. But I think sometimes these things just have to be plastic in order to keep down cost. I mean, you could just imagine how much more they would be if they were all metal. Plus, you got to consider that they will get really hot over time. So then there is an overheating issue as well. So they probably want to try and avoid that as much as possible. Okay. All right, guys. So the next item in the carousel are the YOLO boxes. We're going to talk about those pretty quickly. We just kind of rolled through these. Most of you guys have already seen these devices before. All right, guys. So what we're looking at right now is the YOLO box mini. So if you don't know, the YOLO box mini is designed to work with one camera at a time. So that means you can plug in one HDMI camera or one USB camera. Now, this will work with those same cameras we just looked at. You can also plug in another HDMI cable to go out to your monitor for monitoring. Now, as far as going live with this device, you have an Ethernet plug here on the top. You can install a SIM card and you can also use Wi-Fi. And as far as audio going into the device, you can plug in a line in or a microphone and you also have the ability to plug in a set of headphones in order to monitor your audio. On the very back of the Mini, there is a nice, um, decent-sized fan on this one. It's going to help keep the device cool. Underneath is where I was mentioning before. You can also plug in an SD card as well as a SIM card, and you also have your power button here as well. And you have a quarter 20 that you could use to connect this to um, a cage or a tripod or something like that, or in my case, mounting it maybe on a gimbal. If I wanted to just have this kind of as a running gun type of little monitor slash encoder, this would be ideal for that. So now the Mini has a lot of the same features as the Pro and the OG, except the fact that you can only connect one camera to this device at a time. Now, the Mini currently right now here on Amazon, guys, is $699, and the OG... Uh, I'm going to have to check. I believe it is $7.99. Uh, again, let me check. Uh, let me just pop over here real quick and see what the prices are, because I did not check before going live today. So the OG is $7.99. The Mini is $6.99. And the Pro has come down significantly in price. It is now $9.99. It was $12.99. Uh, just a little while ago. So, you know, if you guys are interested in either one of these devices, I think right now would probably be a really good time to just, you know, get it, just get you one. All right. So um, that's just a, kind of a quick rundown on the mini. 
and what it can do. Now, I was informed today that there's a bunch, a bunch of new features, a new features coming to the Yolo boxes, guys, like the ability to bring in guest calls, the ability to capture s uh, snippets of your live stream for playback. That's going to be amazing. There's just a ton of different things that you're going to be able to do now with this device. Uh, I don't know when that update's coming out, so I don't want to really focus on it too much because those are not features that are currently available, but I'm pretty sure they're going to come out pretty soon. Uh, so let's take a quick, you know, run through on the Yolo Box Pro itself. So I'm going to switch back over to this little camera here so you guys can see the Yolo Box here on my desk. All right, so here we go. All right, guys, so this is the Yolo Box Pro. Now, this one, you can connect up to four different cameras or, you know, devices. I currently have uh, three devices connected to this. I have two HDMI cameras, and I also have my computer coming in, which is this uh, MacBook Air here coming in as an HDMI source. The next USB-C cable here is connected to the Rodecaster Pro. I have nothing in the Ethernet. Uh, this other HDMI here is connected to my little monitor, so I'm just showing my program view here on this monitor. This USB plug here is actually uh, plugged into the camera that I'm using to show you guys. And then this final USB uh, port here is for power. And that power is coming off of the Home Power 2 over here. That's providing power to this device. What's up, Richard? All right, guys. So the, um, the Yolo Box Pro is inside of the uh, PepperTech uh, 3D printed cage. That's the cage that I'm currently rocking right now, but I'm gonna show you guys a different cage here in a second. You can find this cage also here on Amazon. So right now, what you guys are looking at is what I see when I look down at this device as it's sitting in front of me. I have my different you know, uh, camera angles here. So I have like my camera HDMI 1, HDMI 2, HDMI 3. I have the USB camera, which is right here. My side-by-side -side that I was showing you guys earlier is actually here. And then this is my intro video. Whenever I want to play that, I can just tap on that one and the intro video will play. Right now, I'm under the audio mixer because we had some little audio you know, issues. So I wanted to be able to go through and make sure there was no additional audio issues. And you guys should be able to see right there, I have USB audio enabled. And that's just um, the audio coming off of the Rodecaster Pro 2. Now... For like all of my screen display effects, uh, my lower thirds, my overlays, the Rome knows tech.live, Rome Wilkerson uh, lower third, that's coming right here from this device, that's from internally. The banner at the top that says weekly giveaways, that's also an item. Uh, if you see at the very bottom of the screen, you see where it says YOLO box, that's also something that I have turned on here. I even have my little robot. If I want to turn the robot on, I could just tap on it like this. And then you'll see the robot show up on the screen and he'll just be walking around on the screen. I'll pop him on when, if we have enough followers that we can do our robot race. That'll just be kind of an indicator that we're going to be doing the robot race. But for now, we'll turn him off. As far as platforms, uh, I am streaming out to YouTube and to uh, Amazon here at the same time today. I decided not to stream out to Facebook. Uh, tonight, but you know, I could always add Facebook as another source. I'm also not recording, but I do have the option here to record during the time that I'm streaming at the same time. Jennifer Lude, I see you, I see you. All right, guys. So we already talked about the audio. We talked about the platforms. Of course, we talked a little bit about the overlays. Next thing here would be our scoreboard. So maybe in the future, we'll be playing some kind of games where we actually want to utilize the scoreboard. We have like maybe teams. We can go in, change the name of the game. We can change the colors and give each team logo, you know, a little, um, you know, a graphic for that as well. We'll be able to do all of that right here from this uh, Yolo box. Now, since I'm already over here, let's go ahead and check our comments. So I don't see any comments coming in from the YouTube channel, but if those were coming in, they would show up right here. And then I would just be able to tap on one of those comments and it would then show up on the screen you guys would see it live kind of like uh, when I had my other setup using OBS and every time you guys would type something it would show up on the screen so that's another feature now I have requested to tech support or uh, to the engineers that we you know in the future have an option to turn these on auto where they'll just automatically show up if we want to now we also have this feature here which is our auto switcher so I could set up the auto switcher right now and I could just determine and just let this switch through to different video sources. So if I go in here, so right now you guys can see here, HDMI is the camera that's facing me, okay? HDMI 2 
is the camera that's facing my desk. HDMI 3 is my uh, computer screen, okay? Then we have a few other sources down here, and then those sources are represented here as well. So I could choose HDMI 1, HDMI 2, my side-by-side, -side, my USB camera. Uh, we don't wanna play the local video, and we don't wanna go to my screen, I mean to my computer. So let's say those are all the ones that we wanna pick. We can just hit Done. Now I can come in here and I can also determine how long I want them to stay on one specific thing. So we're just gonna leave it at the default of 10 seconds just so you guys can kind of get an idea how this works. I do have it also set to loop, so it is gonna continually loop through. Now you have an option here under switching order from sequential to random, so I'm gonna go ahead and choose random. And then we're gonna go down here to main source and I'm gonna choose HDMI 1 as my main source. So that's the one I want it to sit on the most, right? So now when I go all the way back up here and I turn the switcher on, it's gonna automatically start switching through the different camera feeds. And you know, I'll just talk through the whole thing, but you guys will be able to see what's gonna happen here. Colander, welcome, welcome, welcome to the live Colander. So right now, it's just switching through the different um, um, cameras. So right now it's on my uh, HDMI, uh, well now I think it's on HDMI 2, and then soon after that it'll switch over to another one, and I will just keep doing this, just keep, keep doing these switches until uh, I disable it, and I tell it to stop switching between the different camera angles. Now for some people this could be a really cool thing, maybe you have multiple cameras set up and you want to be able to just kind of switch between those. So you know, right now I'm going to go ahead and disable that so it will stop switching. But you guys did see you had the ability to set it up, you know, where you can determine how long it's going to stay on each camera angle and then how frequent, you know, it's going to switch between those angles and the order that it switches in. So that's just another feature for the Yolo box. And then, of course, the only thing that's left here, guys, is like your settings. And you can go in here and you can take a look at your video sources, your SD card. Now under SD card, what this does is it just tells you what's gonna happen when you switch away from a video. Will it pause? Will it continue playing? Or will it start from the beginning? I like for it to pause. So usually I always enable this, you know, when I know I'm gonna be using some type of video sources. That way if I switch away from the video and I'm talking about something, if I go back to the video, it'll start wherever I left off. Uh, as far as SD card management, this is just whatever you have saved on your SD card. As you guys see, I've used up pretty much the majority of this SD card already. Uh, let's see, go back here. And now we also have program out. So I have this program out enabled. And what that's doing is showing uh, the full stream on this little monitor here. So I'm able to see exactly what you guys are seeing, okay, on that monitor. I'm not using the USB-C out. If I wanted to use this, this would be if I wanted to connect the Yolo box to say a computer and use it just solely as a switcher, I could enable USB out and then I could just plug the USB cable directly into this computer, bring that into OBS or whatever other you know, application you're using and you'll just be able to use this primarily as a switcher. But you would lose some of the functionality of some of the different features, okay? Now you have your video, um, Transitions, you have a few transitions up in here you can choose from. You can also choose the, the uh, duration of the transition and you even now have this new fade to black, so that's pretty cool. Um, hey Zeus and Jessica, I am doing great. It was a very long day. I had some problems with my Wi-Fi and I was fighting with AT&T, well at least trying to fight with them, but I could never really get uh, tech on the phone, so that happened all day for like multiple hours. But you know, I am live right now. It's still not set up the way I want it to be, but it doesn't matter, I'm currently live, so we're just gonna roll with it. We're gonna make the best out of it. We got lemons gonna make some lemonade. You know how we do it. All right, so we have our streaming modes. Now you can stream to one platform at a time, or you can use the YOLO Live server and multi-stream to up to three different destinations at the same time. Uh, let's see what else we got here that I may have missed out. So we have our video output mode. That's just gonna determine how the video is gonna come out from the device. And then you have your encoders. So right now, if you guys see right now, the bit rate is 2000 and the frames per second is 30. And I have this set on continuous bit rate. Continuous bit rate is really what most of the uh, streaming platforms like. 2000 kilobits is a little bit low, but this won't allow me to go to um, 2800, which is the, the standard for Amazon. Uh, because if I go up 
it'll just go straight to 3000. So there's no way I can control it in between. I think that's something they're going to update in the future where we'll actually be able to go in and dial in the exact number that we want to put in here. And then that just will be, you know, another, another feature. Uh, that's one I definitely request it. Then we have our recorded limits. So that means how long is it going to record once you hit record 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes or continuous. I have it set to continuous, but what that does is even if you're in continuous mode, it will still break the video files up a little bit. I think at like three, three gigabytes or something like that, it'll create a new file, but they'll be seamless when you bring them, you know, in Adobe Premiere or Final Cut or iMovie or whatever you use to edit your videos. It's going to be perfect. And then you have your storage. So you can use an SD card for storage or now you can use USB storage. We're gonna talk about that here in a little bit, but this is what I was talking about before, guys, when I mentioned that before, that you could use the, the SSD drive that I had mentioned before, you could use that to uh, record to as well. So that's pretty much a rundown of everything that uh, you can you know, see here with the yellow box. Of course, you can go in here, you have all of these other features. You can do an image overlay, lower thirds, countdown timer. You can bring in an image from the web. You can also do, uh, four basic titles that it has available for you. You can go in and customize those as well. And you also, let me see if I can go back here. You also can bring in your um, social media overlays. You can just tap on those and go in and customize them. You can choose a different icon or maybe something custom. You know, I have like a custom one for Amazon. So if I go in here and I choose my Amazon, no, I don't think that's the right one. If I choose, nope, that's definitely not the right one. I think it's that one. So if I choose this little icon for Amazon, then I can select that. And you can see now we have the Amazon little icon there. I could just put my handle on here, you know, Rome knows tech. And then this will just show up on the screen. I can move it around the screen pretty much anywhere I want to. You can also change the size of this as well. So this is just another built-in feature that you have access to. All right, guys. So that is the Yolo Box Pro. Of course, we do have the Yolo Box Mini here in the studio as well. So yeah, you guys got any questions about these devices whatsoever, that's what I'm here for guys, feel free to ask. Now the next thing in the carousel <clears throat> is also Yolo Box Pro related. It, it's a cage that was another cage that was sent to me. Now this one was sent to me by YC Onion. This is a metal cage. Now the cage that I show you, showed you guys earlier that the Yolo Box is in is in a 3D printed cage. But the, the other cage is actually metal. Let me grab it and show you guys. Oh, there it is. Okay, so here's the other cage. So this cage comes in four pieces plus all of these jerk stoppers. You have to assemble the cage, uh, but it's very simple to put together. So once you have the, the three basic pieces together, you just slide the yellow box inside of it, then put the bottom on and then just connect it with the other additional four screws. And then you're gonna have this complete little uh, rectangular frame that goes all the way around your Yolo Box Pro or the OG, cause there's one for these for the OG as well. And then on the back, you guys can see here, we have these little jerk stoppers. And what those do is when you plug your HDMI or USB cables into the device, it'll prevent them from accidentally being pulled out. So once you release these, these just kind of go up and down like this. And then you can place this right over the top of the cable. And if you get it right about where you want it, you just tighten this down like so. And that's just gonna lock it in place and it's gonna prevent that cable from being pulled out. Now this has quarter 20s all the way around here on the back underneath. You got quarter 20s, more quarter 20s on this side. You have a mounting point here at the bottom to connect it to your Yolo box. And um, the only thing that this is missing for me is a way to mount something on top of it, but this, this cage doesn't have that. But you know, overall guys, this is a really nice cage. It has some cold shoe mounts on either side, one on each side of it. You could add, um, say like a wireless microphone. You could add a light to it. You know, use your imagination. You guys will come up with whatever you think would work best for you. But for me, this cage is more for my on location because it's metal. It's, it's gonna protect the device. It's gonna lock the cables in place. Now, when I'm here in the studio, not so much of a big deal because, you know, it's rarely that somebody's gonna be walking behind this desk when I'm here and, you know, unplugging something. So I don't really have to worry about that as much. But it is good to, you know, have that, you know, peace of mind that when you're setting this gear up, you don't have to worry about a plug getting ripped out and, you know, damaging one of your ports or ending your live stream abruptly because somebody accidentally stepped on a cable. So, you know, there's that. All right, let me see what's going on down here in the comments. Um, 
Rome, are you in here? <laughs> yes. Yes, I am here. I'm assuming you can hear me. I'm assuming you can anyway. Um, oh, is it really? The new American horror story is out. You know what? I watched all the seasons up until the final season, the, the last season. I didn't really get into the last season, and I don't know why. It just didn't seem to appeal to me. But I'm going to give it another chance, Vicky. I'm going to give it another chance. I'm going to see if I can, you know, uh, maybe maybe go back and watch the previous season so then I won't feel like I'm missing something. But for those who are fans of this show, you know there is a universe, and they are all kind of connected. But sometimes... Even if you missed an entire season, it doesn't really matter because they'll start up the next season on something completely different that has very little, maybe some Easter eggs that kind of relate to the first season or other seasons, but it won't be most of the time a direct you know, cut from this ended on episode eight and on episode one of season, the next season, it's going to pick up right there. So it doesn't usually work like that. I am also watching Wild, um, Westworld. And the new season of Westworld jumps in time. So, you know, it kind of picks up not at, not right after what the, the last things that happened. I think there's like a five or 15 year, you know, period between, you know, what's going on right now on Westworld versus what happened at the end of the last season. So it's still pretty cool. So I don't know what other shows you guys watch. Man, I'm telling you guys, I watch a lot of content. That was another reason I was very, very disappointed that when I got up this morning, my Wi-Fi wasn't working. I was like, oh, all of my shows tonight. I don't record them. I just go to the different networks, you know, and I just watch them, you know, and sometimes I will binge watch things. But I got pretty good discipline. I'm like, okay, I'm only going to watch one episode. I'm going to move on. Have How many of you guys have seen Raised by Wolves? The uh, HBO Max show, Raised by Wolves. If you've seen that, let me know if you've seen that show. Because uh, that's one of my favorite shows, too. Uh, let me see what is, is going on down here. Uh, the new season. Um, so it is already out. Oh, it's Dollhouse. That's right, right, that's right. Because I saw some I saw some primo, um, primi, primo um, videos on it on YouTube, I think a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, it was just, it just it would pop up in my feed because I watch a bunch of different shows. And, you know, Alexa's always listening. So, you know, if you talk about something now, I guarantee you when I go when I go to YouTube tonight or tomorrow, it's going to be nothing but that in my feed because Alexa's like right. Right here. <laughs> Fasino's in the house. What up, bro? What it do? All right, so I had planned on doing the same thing that I'd done last night where I pulled up the green screen because I told you guys I purchased the green screen uh, from Christina Nietzsche's Live. I, I finally got a green screen here in the studio. I don't really use a green screen for the most part in my type of setup, but I do have some creative ideas of how to use it going forward. But I did go ahead and create a scene just for you guys, and I was thinking about you guys earlier, and I thought you guys would really appreciate this. So I'm going to go ahead and set this scene back up. Uh, hopefully I won't get in any trouble for it, but I'm going to go ahead and set it up anyway. So I'm going to do a quick little picture in picture with a green screen, and you guys, I'm going to show you like a cool, creative way you can use green screens. You've seen this every day on your news uh, broadcasts and stuff like that. So I'm going to go in here and just create a, a quick little... Uh, uh, picture in picture is what we're going to go for. So I'm going to do a picture in picture. I'm going to use this one as our main. Oops, I made a mistake. So I got to go back, go back out. First, I got to add this video. So I got to add a video source. And where is it? There it is. Is there another one? No, nope, there it is. So let me add this video source. And then we're going to create our picture in picture. So I want you guys to see how cool this can be, right? So here is... Um, let me set the camera up right. All right, so we have our cameras. We're going to have the cameras from my uh, B camera, and I'm going to choose that. Then I'm going to choose this other little uh, animated clip that I have here. I'm going to choose that. And then I'm going to go in and scale this up. And I forgot to key it out. So I may have to go back. Let me go back and key, her, key it out first. 
All right, there we go. So that's keyed out. Now I'm going to go to the picture in picture. Let's try this one more time. So we're going to do a picture in picture. I'm going to choose that one. We're going to choose this keyer. And uh, I'm going to scale this up a little bit. And I'm just going to kind of move it around, maybe about right there. All right, guys. So this is another cool way you can do a picture in picture on your live stream. You could literally have a big green screen and you could just be walking around talking about some giant products like, wow, look at this amazing camera over here. This thing is amazing. It's from Ozbot. Look at it. Just check it out. You definitely need one of these cameras. But this camera, now this camera here is on a whole nother level. You know, this is going to be perfect for my gamers, my streamers, my content creators. Guys, I'm telling you, get you one of these cameras, whether you go with the, with the uh, Ozbot, 4K PTZ tiny camera, or if you decide you may want to go with the um, the 4K meat, either of these cameras are going to be amazing for you. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I was playing with that earlier today while my Wi-Fi was down. I was like, oh, you know, I got all these little video clips. I'm going to try one of these video clips to see what everybody would think about it. So <laughs> Vicky, it called evil. Oh, the TV show evil. Uh, yeah, I've watched, I think I watched season one, maybe season two, or maybe they're on season two. I can't remember if they're on season two, but like I said, I watch a lot of shows. So if you guys mention a show that I probably haven't watched, it would really surprise me like the Witcher, um, other shows. Uh, what else there? I mean, I watch so many, so many different shows. Uh, I am very excited about the new Lord of the Rings uh, that's coming here on uh, Amazon, as well as She-Hulk. I watched all of Moon Knight. I just finished uh, Miss Marvel uh, a couple of nights ago. So I'm into anything that's fantasy, adventure, action, that kind of thing. So I even watch, you know, the occasional horror series. You know, I'm, I've been watching Resident Evil um, uh, the, the, the Netflix version of it, it's been pretty good as well. You know, it has a couple of, you know, loopers, you know, like, okay, did that, did, did that really just happen? Yeah. So check it out guys. Check it out. You can find it on Netflix. Now, if you don't already have you a fire stick guys, this is another reason I am always talking about these fire sticks. No, I do not have one in the carousel tonight, but this is a perfect example why you need a fire stick. So you could have all of your platforms right there, all of your different networks that you watch, you know, hit one button, you could see them all. You can jump back and forth like I do most nights. You know, I'm like checking emails, you know, I'm responding to stuff. I'm talking on the phone. Well, I don't usually put the phone up to my head. I'm like talking on the speakerphone or responding to people and, you know, you know, different social media platforms, but I'm watching TV the whole time, whole time. So just saying, but anyway, I got to show this green screen because of the fact that it is in the carousel. So I have to physically show it. So let me grab it real quick. So you guys can see the green screen. <clears throat> So this is the, the Elgato green screen. This is the one I was talking about that I purchased during uh, Christina Nietzsche's live. Uh, it is very easy to put it up. Very, very easy to take it back down. It just sits into this little, uh, like a little trough and it does close up. It is very easy to travel with. It's got two little clips on it to shut everything down. Now behind this is like an, uh, a Y pattern or X pattern, a uh, little suspension. And that's what allows it to go up and down kind of like this. So whenever I want to put it down, all I have to do is grab the top of it and just push it back down into the, um, into the thing that it lives in. Yep, just like that. Just like that. All right, what's next? Next in the carousel, we're going to just go ahead and rock out on some of this audio gear. But first, I need to clean my desk up a little bit. So let me move some of these things off the desk because I got all these little cameras. I don't know if that's any better, but that's going to have to work for now. You see, I just moved everything back. It's not great, <laughs> but it freed up some, it freed up some space. So I pushed it back. So, all right guys. So the next thing in the carousel is the, um, the Zoom H6, this is a field recorder. Now, for a lot of you that are thinking about podcasting or thinking about streaming, 
Audio is 75% of your production. The quality of your audio will determine if people will hang out. My audio went out a little bit earlier because I plugged this camera in. And, you know, because they're both USB cameras, the Yolo box couldn't figure out which one, you know, was supposed to be the audio device. So it messed up my audio for a second. But luckily, you know, you guys recognized it and let me know and I was able to fix it. All right, so this is the Zoom H6. Now, the kit that I got did come with these two microphones. You get this, this uh, omnidirectional mic and this XY mic. Both of the microphones have their own gain controls. Those are little knobs you see with the numbers on it. Now, you can interchange these microphones. You just press these two little buttons. You press them in and pull out, and you can just take the microphone off, and you just place it back on basically the same way. Now on each side of these microphone, I mean this uh, field recorder, you have these dual ports. That means you can either plug in an instrument or you can plug in a microphone. Now on this side, you also have, let me show you, you also have your USB input, you have your menu button, and you have your rocker switch. On the very back, you have your line out. Now what the line out is gonna be good for is connecting this to another camera or recorder. It, there's also a port for a uh, remote. I've never used the remote, but you can find it. I did find it here on Amazon as well. Now on this side, guys, you have another set of those dual ports. You can plug in either instruments or microphones. You can install your SD card here under this little door. You can install your, um, your headphones, plug them in here. And you also have the um, gain controls for your headphones and your on and off power switch on the top. On the top, you have your gain controls for whatever you have plugged into this device. You also have these row of buttons along here that you can use to turn on or off anything that you have plugged into it. Right below that, you have these normal little transport buttons. That's gonna be your, um, your record, your, your play, pause, rewind, fast forward. You have a colored screen that is not a touch screen, but it is color, but that's gonna show you all your different levels you know, while you're recording. Um, two things important with these devices, having a set of headphones plugged in so you can monitor your audio and keeping a, an eye on these actual levels, just in case, you know, you didn't hear something, you will see it if your levels are going into, you know, uh, into the red, you know, you just want to keep track of that. And if they start going into the red, that's what these little, these, uh, little, uh, knobs are for you just, you know, reduce the gain wherever you need to and keep your, your audio under control. Now, you're not limited to the two microphones that you guys see here. Zoom also makes a number of different microphones, including some shotgun microphones that will work with this same little field recorder. Now, this one does have a little speaker underneath it. I don't recommend it. I think if you're going to listen to the audio you've recorded on this, either copy it off or plug in a set of headphones. That's going to give you a better experience. These only take four AA batteries. Just four AA batteries, and yes, I am rocking the Amazon Basic batteries in here, but these things last for like months uh, because I don't really <laughs> use these recorders as frequently as I did back in 2019. 2020 was just like, you know, you know what happened 2020. <clears throat> All right, so what's next? Next, audio-wise, um, is going to be our Rodecaster Pro, the OG. So let me grab that. We're just going to kind of go through a few of the features here real quick. All right, guys, here we go. So this is the Rodecaster Pro. This is the OG. This is the one that came out in 2018. I got this like the second week it was out. All right, so you got a row of buttons down here at the bottom. That's going to be your, your mute and solo buttons here at the bottom. Um, these are your faders. So you have four faders just for your microphones. So you can plug four XLR microphones like this microphone directly into this device. You can also plug a USB device in. You can bring in a smartphone using a TRS cable. You can bring in another smartphone using Bluetooth because you can connect a Bluetooth uh, device to this as well. Now you have this little five inch touch screen. This is gonna also show you all of the things under the hood when you go in and change and adjust. Maybe add your compressors, your limiters, your noise gates, your um, you know, DSers or big bottoms or whatever it is you're doing. You'll be able to see that represented here on this little screen. These little buttons here will allow you to go in on each microphone and do different adjustments for the microphones themselves. You got a big record button right here. At the end of the day, guys, this is a recorder. Now the sound effects are played from these buttons here. You have eight of those sound effect buttons. You can have multiple banks 
of sound effects. And, but it's going to be only eight of them will be accessible to you at any given time. Now to switch between these different banks, you would have to use the touch screen. He has a little icon that shows up on a touch screen. And you just kind of go back and forth between those to go to the next, to advance to the next bank. Now, if you have four sets of headphones plugged in, these are your gain controls for those. And if you have um, speakers plugged in, you can also use this to gain control for your speakers. Now on the back of this, now just to be clear, so you guys know this is not plastic. This, uh, the top shell is all metal, like an aluminum alloy. Now on the back here, you have your plugs for your microphones. This right here, this little TRS plug is for your smartphone. Right here, you can plug in your four headphones. You can plug in your left and right channel for your speakers. You also can plug in a mini SD card to record to. You can plug in a USB cable if you wanna connect this to your computer. That's where that's gonna come in handy. You got a power plug, you got a power switch, and you have a Kensington lock. Many of you who work in the office know what a Kensington lock is. So you can lock up your laptop and stuff so people don't just walk away with it. Now this older version does have a little bit of space underneath here where air could flow under it to keep it cool, you know, to keep it from overheating. This thing is not super heavy, but at the same time, it doesn't feel light nor cheap. It feels very well made underneath. There is no, um, you know, Kensington lock here. I mean, no uh, Versa mount but you do have four of these decent sized pads for the feet. So that's gonna keep it from sliding around on your desk. This, fit, this thing has some weight, it has some weight. And I tell you guys, people ask me this all the time since they know that I've gotten the new version, the Rodecaster Pro 2. Am I gonna sell this? Am I gonna give this away? Am I just gonna stop using it? No, this thing is still relevant today. It's still gonna be relevant two years from now, okay? So if you're on the fence about which one of these units you wanna buy. The only thing you have to do is your pros and cons, you know, which new features on the Rodecaster Pro 2 can you not live without? So if, you know, the basic things that this one can do, if it meets all of your requirements, guys, get this one. Get this one right here for 488. Um, you can get the Rodecaster Pro, the OG. <clears throat> Now we do have the Rodecaster Pro 2. So I'm gonna try and set up this Ozbot camera so I can show you this one. Let's see if I can adjust this camera and tilt it down a little bit. All right guys, so here we go. So this is the uh, Rodecaster Pro 2. Now, if you see, this one looks very similar to the first one we looked at. You have, you know, down here at the bottom, you have your mute and solo buttons. Uh, you also have six faders but you actually have nine channels. Now, three of those channels are virtual. You would have to access them through the screen. Now, the screen on this one, if you guys notice, is now elevated, where the previous one was very flat and flush with the device. And if you notice, also for my keen-eyed people, the uh, record button has been moved to the opposite side of the screen. Now, on this side of the screen, now we have like our multifunction uh, little dial button. Now, as far as our gain controls for our headphones, now they have changed their position as well. Now they also light up, they have little LEDs around them. And then over here, we no longer have, you know, uh, sound effect buttons. Now these are considered to be smart buttons. And then right down here below those smart buttons, you guys can see there's now two more buttons here. Before on the older Rodecaster Pro, you had to use the touch screen in order to switch between the different banks. Now you can just press these buttons to go back and forth between the different banks that you want to um, go between maybe your sound effects, your voice effects, or whatever you have saved onto it. You know, maybe you have an interview or something like that saved onto it as well. Now you can now connect with the new version Guys, now you can connect instruments to this device. So now you can plug in a guitar, you can plug in a keyboard, um, you can plug in another mixer, you know, if you wanna bring it in from a line in. So right now I only have two uh, microphones plugged in right now. Um, and the one that you're listening to right now, guys, is the, um, the Rode Procaster, but I do have the pod mic uh, plugged in as well. We'll talk about that and I'll let you guys hear that here in a little bit. But that's just kind of like a basic rundown of what you can do and what to be expected with this uh, new version of the uh, Rodecaster Pro 2. Now this one, the processor is about 16 times more powerful than the Rodecaster Pro 1. Um, there's actually updates waiting for this device that I have not done yet because I didn't have Wi-Fi today and I forgot to do it yesterday. But this is the device that I use when I'm playing, like say for instance, sound effects or when I'm going through my voice effects. So when you guys hear this, 
and I'm talking like this, that's how I'm doing. I'm just press this one button, and if you guys see right there, it says incognito voice. So I'm going to tell you guys a story, <laughs> something that happened to me today. So let me turn this off. All right, so let me tell you guys what happened to me today. Let me switch back over here. So I decided I was going to do some shoppable videos because of the fact that the Wi-Fi was down and I wanted to do something. So I'm like, okay, well, I got a, you know, a few items up here I haven't done any videos on. So I came upstairs and I set everything up. I had turned both of the cameras on. I, had the, I was recording directly into the yellow box. No problem, cameras were set up. I could see the different angles. You know, I do my normal spill. You know, hey guys, it's Rome Wilkerson. Let me show you, blah, 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 blah. And then I switch over to the, the other camera view and I'm like showing the product and talking about the product. Cool, no problem. That was, you know, video number one. Then I just kept rolling with it. I'm like, okay, I, I did a, you know, I, I fade to black. Then I started the next video. Hey guys, it's Rome Wilkerson, you know, blah, 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 blah. Same thing, same thing, you know, down to the other camera angle. Three times, three different videos I did. Three. Count them. Three. I did three. I did three videos, man. You hear me? Three. Okay? So this is what happened. I got downstairs. This this happened for real. Real story. Real story. Okay, so I got downstairs and uh I, I took my laptop, I brought my laptop, took it downstairs, and I'm sitting there drinking, just drinking my tea, just drinking my tea. And I put the, the SD card in, right? So I'm like, okay, I'm going to start editing the photos. I mean, the videos, get them ready to upload them onto Amazon or whatever it is. So I played the first video and it sounded like this. Hey, everyone. My name is Ron Wilkerson. I'd like to show you guys this amazing light. And I was like, what the? No, that didn't. No, no. No, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. So I recorded all three of those videos with that voice effect on. And because I didn't put my headphones on, okay, I had no headphones on. So I'm just, you know, I'm thinking, okay, everything is normal. I didn't even realize what had happened was probably last night when I was ending the stream. I probably switched to that sound effect, you know, when I'm saying goodbye to everybody. And I just never turned it off. So when I came back upstairs... <laughs> So when I came back upstairs and I recorded those videos, I still got them. I still got them. I literally had sent a message to Mr. Mod and I was like, you will not believe what just happened. And he's like, what happened, bro? What happened? I'm like, so I'm, I'm describing it to him, right? And he's like, man, you got to keep those videos, bro. That's going to be like blooper gold, right? You just play those videos. And I'm like, oh, my life be like... <laughs> Yep, the crazy stuff that be happening to me all the time, y'all. All the time. All right. All right, so what's next? So next in the carousel, if I didn't mention, the uh, Rodecaster Pro 2 is $699. I don't think there is a discount on it, but I did not look today because, again, my Wi-Fi wasn't working, man. I got it. It's working now, though. I think it's working. I'm live, so it's got to be working. Unless it's just all in my imagination. It could all just be in my imagination. Maybe I'm not really alive. Maybe I'm just sitting in a corner drinking tea, imagining I was on Amazon, streaming on YouTube, talking to you guys, but it's not real. Or is it? Mm -hmm. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, so the next item in the carousel uh, is these little earbuds because now the new Rodecaster Pro, you can use Bluetooth headphones and Bluetooth earbuds. I have these Samsung earbuds. I've had these things for a couple of years now. I did list them in the carousel because these are one of my favorite earbuds uh, that I've ever used. And I've had so many different sets of earbuds. These things just rock it out, guys. Bass, you know, good treble. You know, if I'm listening to music or if I'm just watching a video, these things are very immersive. So check them out. They do come with this little chargeable case. 
So you can recharge um, your your earbuds with the case itself. You know, I'm a big fan of any of those devices that come with things like this. There's a few things. Uh, I think there's like one or two other things in the carousel that have this ability as well. Trust me, I love it when I can just pop my stuff back in the case, close the case, and while I'm riding down the road, my earbuds are charging. When I get to the next spot, I just pop these out, stick them in my ear, and I can play my music, and I'm, I'm set. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, $72.99. Check these out. All right, so you guys saw earlier um, when I was showing you on the YOLO box how you can switch between the SD card or the USB um, storage. So this is one of the devices, guys, that I use for USB storage. This is the ScanDisk. Uh, let me go ahead and highlight it in the carousel. This is a ScanDisk uh, SSD drive, right? This is a one terabyte. You can get this in two terabytes, one terabyte, 500 gigabytes, 250 gigabytes as well. Uh, whatever your you know your preference is is available to you. You can also use this with your Yolobox Pro. You can connect this via USB, and you can also record directly to this device as well. Now I'm currently when I record to it, I just use the uh, the SD card that, that Yolo Live just sent me. Right now, if I didn't mention it today, and I'll mention it now because I probably forgot to. Both Yolo boxes were sent to me by Yolo Live. I did not pay for them. But, of course, I don't talk about things on my live stream that I don't support, that I don't believe in. So, guys, if you hear me talking about a product, trust me, it's a product that I support. It's something that I rock with. And this is another one of those things. I have had so many of these over the years. This one I've had for about three, maybe almost four years. I dropped this thing down some stairs at a photo shoot and broke it, okay? And I got downstairs and I was telling the makeup artist, you know, because we're getting another model ready for a shoot. And I'm like, man, I can't believe I dropped my drive. It fell downstairs and it broke. And she's like, well, I have some glue. And like, you know, the first automatic reflex for me was like, what kind of glue? <laughs> she literally just gave me that side eye. And she's like, okay, you broke your thing. I got some glue. Okay. I got some glue, bro. So she gave me some nail glue. I put the nail glue on here. And this thing has literally been on there ever since then. Okay, so I'm just saying. And this thing rocks, guys. I literally uh, edit 4K and 5K video right off of this drive. It is literally that fast. So check it out. If you don't do any of that stuff, that's cool too. Just get one for storage, you know, just to store your files, you know, your family photos, videos, stuff like that. You know, we shoot a lot of videos and photos on our phone. Then after a couple of years, we swap out phones, upgrade our phones. A lot of times we lose a bunch of that content. That's where you need one of these guys. You really do. Missy, Missy, Missy's in the house. Welcome, Missy. Doom, 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 doom. All right, guys, so the next item in the carousel is this microphone right here. This is my Rode Procaster. It is on sale, girl, it's on sale. It, well, it ain't on sale, sale. Not like big giant sale, but it's, but it's, 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 it's less than it was yesterday. It's, it's $168.99, it was $171.99 last night. It's a savings. Every dollar is a savings. Every dollar you make is a profit, right? Right. Okay. So anyway, uh, this is my daily driver. I paid over two hundred and fifty dollars for this microphone when it first came out because I just had to have it. So I started off with the Shure SM7B. I had the Rodecaster Pro, uh, the original one. The Rodecaster Pro couldn't provide enough gain for that microphone, so you did need to use something like a cloud lifter, some type of inline preamp. I was just not having it, so I was like, no, this is not going to work for me. One of my friends was like really, really attracted to that microphone. I'm like, bro, you got some money? He's like, yeah, I got some money. I'm like, give me some money, bro. He gave me some money. I gave him the microphone, so that's, that's what happened, and then I bought this microphone, but before I bought this microphone or that other microphone, I actually bought... Uh, these Rode uh, pod mics. These were like the first microphones I bought when I thought I was going to be a podcaster like Joe Rogan or something. Yeah, that didn't happen. <laughs> that did not happen. But uh, if you like the sound of this microphone, maybe it's not too big for your desk. Let me show you the difference between the two. Now, this microphone is a little bassy. It's a little on the bassy side. And if you get really, really close to it, you get that proximity effect. Like, you know, DJs back in the 90s, they used to literally be eating the microphone. Like, yeah, okay, guys, we're going to play this next song. This next song going out to my my, 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 my road dog, you know, uh, 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 Pizza Killer. Yeah, so I'm going to play this song for Pizza Killer. All right, let's, let, let's let it roll. <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah, it does have that proximity effect if you enter that. So you got that. All right. Uh, Elvis is in the house. Elvis is in the house. Welcome, welcome, Elvis. Welcome. Welcome, Elvis. What is it doing, man? You know, we've been looking at everywhere for you, Elvis. Man, where you been? Where you been? When is the next show? Because, you know, I'm buying me some tickets. What's up? How you doing? Let's make it cracking. All right. Let's get it. Get it. Get it. All right, guys. So uh, <laughs> anyway, next microphone. Next microphone we're going to take a listen to is the Rode Pod mic. Let's take a listen to that. Now I'm going to pot down my daily drive. I'm going to switch over to the Pod mic. All right, guys, so now I'm speaking on the Rode Pod mic. This microphone is $99. You can find it right here on Amazon literally every single day. Every once in a while, it will go on sale. But guys, for $99, this is an all-metal microphone. Nice built-in yoke, easily adjustable. Check this out. I could easily adjust this microphone. I could, I could mount this on a boom arm or a desk stand or... Maybe I could be one of them crazy people walk around and hold it in my hand because I actually saw somebody using this microphone that way one time. They were literally walking around with a long cable, just walking around talking. I'm like, oh, my goodness. That person has no friends. I mean, no friends. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> anyway, so this is the Rode Pod mic. So if you guys are jamming with this, you like the sound of this microphone, you like the size, you want to, you know, something small, compact, built like a tank, going to last pretty much forever, um, check it out. $99. Now, I did also throw down the carousel, some XLR cables. That's these cables here, guys, that you see that, you know, connected to the back of the microphone. I'm running some basic cables just like that. These are the same cables. Check it out. These are the same cables that I bought when I bought these microphones. Four years ago, same cables, still rocking them. I'm just saying, just saying, you know, invest right. You won't have to keep reinvesting every month, every year, whatever. The stuff just works, just works, okay? The reason why I always, you know, uh, talk about road gear is because it just works. I, I come upstairs, I turn my stuff on. I'm not wondering if it's going to work. I, in my back of my mind, I'm just like, I know it's going to work. I know it's going to work because it always works. Now, there might be, uh, you know, a fluke down the road. Something does happen. It could happen, you know, but 99% of the time, it's just going to work. All right, let me go back to my daily driver. All right, baby, don't get jealous. I was just over there with that pod mic, you know. You know, that pod mic don't mean nothing to me. It's just, you know, it's me and you, okay? Just, just, just okay, it's all good. I'm going to go, I'm going to push it out the way. I'm going to just push this. I, I got this, baby. I got this. <clears throat> All right, I'm back. <clears throat> Hope y'all didn't hear all that. <laughs> you know, you know, couple drama. <laughs> <laughs> Billy. <laughs> what it do, Billy? Thank you for the follow. Thank you for the follow. I know I'm missing some stuff down here in the comments, so let me see what's going on. Uh, what's up, Rome? That pod mic is solid. Yes, it is. It is solid. But, you know, this one gets a little jealous, you know, when I be over there. You know, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So I don't need no drama. I don't need no drama, so I'm just going to chill right here, right up in here. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to, I don't, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. I'm right here. I'm right here. <laughs> <laughs> Billy, welcome, welcome to the live stream. Welcome to the craziness that is Rome Knows Tech. There is no telling what might happen. Things will just sometimes spontaneously fall out of the sky. So y'all can't see what I'm looking at. I have a set of swords up there and I moved this shelf the other day. So evidently I knocked one of the swords off of the stand. So I'm going to show y'all this, but this is just between me and y'all. Okay. Y'all ain't going to get Alan, 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 Alan. Yes, I'm talking to you. Don't be running over to Chris's stream telling him I dropped something or I broke something. Because this happened, Alan, a couple of days ago, okay? If you notice, I rearranged the studio a couple of days ago. So this does not count as a dropped item, Alan. 
<laughs> All right, guys, let me show you what I, what I just noticed. So up here, here's my here's my um, my my little stand where I keep like some of my gear when I grab it to talk about it. So I was just looking up there and I noticed that my swords, if you guys see my swords up there, I noticed that one of them was off the stand. So that must have happened when I was pushing this around and one of them just kind of slipped off like that. So yeah, crazy times. Just I told y'all, I man, I okay. Y'all act like y'all act like I don't warn y'all about this kind of stuff. I told you this kind of stuff happens here all the time. So <laughs> What's up, Richard? Richard, Richard, Richard! What it do? Richard, I had a rough day, bro. But you know what? I'm 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 over it. I'm over it. I'm 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 ready for you know later tonight. I'll make some dinner, watch some shows. You know, Vicky just told me that um uh, American Horror Story, you know, the new ep new season just started, so I'm probably gonna check out a little bit of that. I, I think I'm at the last or near the last episode of um uh, Resident Evil on Netflix, so I'm gonna check that out as well. Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, that's Bruce Banner back there just chilling. Bruce Banner, uh, you know, he, he's not with the Avengers right now. You know, they kind of like on hiatus right now. But you know, you know, I'm pretty sure you know he's gonna he's gonna you know he's gonna go back over there and roll with them when they need him. You know, Thor comes by here sometimes. You know, just drop in the backyard and kill all my grass, and he'd be like, "Hey man, is Bruce here?" I'm like, "Yeah, Bruce, Bruce, Bruce upstairs. He in the studio." He's like, "Can I go up and see Bruce?" Yeah, man, go on up there, holler at Bruce. You know what I'm saying? So just don't break nothing. Don't set that hammer down on none of my desk because you remember what happened last time, Thor. Let's not go through this, okay? We don't want that drama in this camp. So I'd be telling Thor, man. Don't come in here breaking my stuff, okay? Because Bruce might go off, and there's gonna be some drama in this camp, okay? And I can't afford it, bro. I mean, I don't rebuilt this house like 14 times since Bruce been living here. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I'm just saying I, I can't do it again. All right, let's keep rolling. All right, guys. So the next thing in the carousel are the Rode Wireless Go microphones. If you guys are not familiar with these. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about them. So the Rode Wireless Go microphones are gonna be perfect, perfect, perfect for connecting to your smartphone, to your tablet, to your computer, and of course, to your camera as I use them. Now, I usually just connect the receiver itself with a uh, TRS to TRS cable directly into the camera. The kit does come with that cable. Now, the kit that I have listed in the carousel for $244.90, you're gonna get two microphones, one receiver. You're gonna get this nice little dead cat. You're gonna get three of these little dead cats. You're also gonna get a, um, a nice little travel pouch that you can keep all of your different um, devices in. These new ones now also work with the Rode Connect app. So once you purchase your microphones, you'll be able to install the Rode Connect app on your Mac or PC. It's gonna open up some new features, including a virtual type of Rodecaster Pro-like feature that you'll be able to use on your Mac or your PC. So you have the gain controls, you'll be able to do like little podcasts. That's why you really want to have the two microphones that way you can have yourself and a guest and you'll be able to play sound effects, all that kind of cool stuff. Even if you haven't gotten the microphone yet, guys, download the app and just check it out. You see what I'm talking about. It will make you want to have a set of these microphones. Now, these are not the only ones that work with the Rode Connect app. The Rodecaster Pro does. A number of other Rode microphones also work with that app. I'm just telling you about what you can do with the Rode Wireless Go microphones, okay? Now, these also now have internal memory, so that means you can record a backup track. Of course, you know, you have this omnidirectional microphone. You guys can see that on the front, and you can plug in a lavalier mic or an additional mic. Now, on this side, you just have your USB plug. That's where you plug it in to charge it. On the back, there's your power button. On this side, nothing, just crickets. And then, of course, you know, you have your clip that you can use to, you know, clip this onto your shirt, your blouse, or whatever it is you want to connect it to. You know, it's just a win. So you get the kit, two microphones, one receiver, the cable, the dead cats, and you get the nice little travel case, plus the benefits of installing the aforementioned uh, Rode Connect app. So again, that is the Rode Wireless Go 2 microphones. Now, we got one more set of wireless microphones we're going to talk about here real quick. <clears throat> So now these wireless microphones are from our friends over at DJI. Now you guys see DJI branding right on there. This this pouch kind of has like that um, that carbon fiber type of pattern to it. Of course it's not carbon fiber, but it has the pattern, right? 
So we open up our little pouch inside of the pouch. Now the pouch has two pockets. You guys can, probably can't see that, but there's two pockets here inside of this little pouch. So in one of the pockets, we have our little charger case. And then on the opposite side, we have two cables. So it comes with a, a, a USB-A to USB-C cable. It also comes with a TRS, a TRS to TRS cable. This is gonna be for your cameras. And then you get two of these little dead cats. You know, you get two of those for wind noise. And this all just kind of fits right here in the first pocket or the first side of the pouch in pocket one, okay? Then in pocket two is where you put your little, your little case. So this is a DJI, um, you know, a little branded case as well. It's kind of got that same kind of carbon fiber feel uh, made into the plastic. Uh, you only need one cable to charge this. That's why it only comes with one cable, one USB to, uh, C to A. And then that will charge the case and everything that's inside of it, inside of the case. You will find the two uh, DJI microphones. You'll also find the receiver. You also find your phone adapter. So you have two phone adapters here, one for iPhone, one for Android, and you even have a little cold shoe mount. Now all of these detach from the receiver. So here's the receiver, this one right now, since I have an Android phone, I just have the USB-C one connected to it. Uh, with this receiver, you can control the microphones. You can you know, stop and start recording on those. Uh, all of the different settings you can adjust from this receiver. There's no need for an app or connecting it to a computer. Literally, this little receiver does everything. And another amazing feature with this receiver, guys, now you can plug a set of headphones directly into this receiver to monitor your audio. That is a rarity with one of these devices. And look at how small this thing is, right? Okay, so whatever adapter you have on it, it'll just go right back in the case. You don't even have to take the adapter off to put it back in the case. So that just fits back in there like that. Okay, now here's the microphones. These microphones are super tiny. Look at how small these microphones are in comparison to say something like the Rode microphones. The Rode microphones are small by themselves, right? But these are like half the size of the Rode microphones. Now, of course, they both have that omnidirectional microphone. They both have the 3.5. You can plug in a, uh, a, a lavalier mic or a different microphone. You also, on let's say on this side, you have your USB in. You can plug in a USB cable. You, that's going to come in really handy when you want to take or, or, or remove Download any files that you record onto this. You also have your power button on that side. Here at the, on the back is where you, is the electrodes for your charging this device. Now on this side, you have a dedicated record button and a sync button, okay? Then of course, this has a little clip. This one has a little clip, just like uh, the Rode does. I'm so careful when I demonstrate that because there was this time a couple of weeks ago, I was doing this and I literally popped this right out of my hand and it flew over the desk. I had to go look for it. So yeah, that was one point to Chris for that day. Now, what's cool with the um, DJI ones, they also come with this little magnet and the magnet just connects on the back of the clip, just like that, right? So what the magnet allows you to do is to take your microphone and you can literally place this microphone anywhere by just using the magnet to connect it to yourself, right? Of course you have those clips, but maybe you know, you're in a situation where, you know you know, it's too high under the neck and the person's talking into, you know, their throat or something like that. And you want the microphone to be a little bit further down. You don't want to use gaffer tape. You don't want to use, uh, you know, some type of safety pin or something like that. This is going to be a better solution. And you can see this is on there, guys. This is not coming off because that magnet is super strong, right? So I could easily put the microphone down here. I could put it over here to the side. I could put it closer up here. I could put it anywhere I want to because I have this little magnet. Now it comes with two of those magnets. They just attach to the clip. And then even when you put these uh, microphones back in the case, okay, they fit the kit. I mean, the uh, little microphone uh, magnets just stay on the clip. They never come off, right? So that's pretty cool. Now, this does have an internal battery. Once you charge everything up, you know, you can charge this with one cable. It'll charge the case and it'll charge the microphone and the receiver. When you take this out, you use these, you deplete all the battery, you know, the microphones, the receiver, whatever it is. This is a charger case. You just drop this back in. It's going to start charging it and it's going to sync the microphones with the receiver. So if you ever lose connection between the microphones and the receiver, all you have to do is put them back in the case together and they will resync back to each other. But you do have a dedicated sync button as well. All right, guys. So that's the DJI wireless microphone and their new little wireless case. This kit is $329.99 here on Amazon because, of course, I forgot to highlight it in the carousel, but I did get it. I got to it. All right, so let's keep rolling. 
and you get this really cute little pouch. So this is gonna fit perfectly in your camera bag, your backpack, big giant pocket, whatever you do. You do you, boo boo, but you got a way, you know, to transport this. I say carry all the accessories with you because you never know when you're gonna need them. So, you know, just keep the whole thing. Just put it in your camera bag. All right, so you guys already saw me earlier playing with my Echo Dot. Um, I use this thing every day. I don't think it's going to work right now because I did not update it uh, since the Wi-Fi went out. So I can't really get it to do anything or tell you jokes like I normally do because I have to go into the Alexa app and then... It looks like your Wi-Fi name or password has changed. To update your Wi-Fi information, go to the Alexa app. So she just told you what I just said. She says that I need to update my Wi-Fi password. So I need to go to the Alexa app, which I will do later after my stream. But of course, Alexa just told you that in a very rude way because you saw she turned her little red light on instead of her normal pleasing blue light. So, you know, yeah, there's that, you know, some drama. But you can get you one. $29.99 right here on Amazon. All right, so let's keep rolling. We ain't got that many things. We don't have that many things left in the carousel. So here's another little camera that I use. I talk about all the time. I probably mention this thing every day in my live streams, and that is the GoPro Hero 10. Now, I do have in the carousel a kit for you guys if you want to check it out. You get the GoPro Hero 10. You're going to get two other rechargeable batteries. You can get a buckle mount and adhesive. You're going to get a USB cable. You're going to get a 32 gigabyte SD card, mini SD card with the adapter. And you get this nice little travel case for this as well. It means you can put all of your accessories in that travel case when you're going out with your GoPro, throw it in your backpack, whatever you do. And trust me, if you get a GoPro, you're going to have accessories. You're going to buy accessories. People are going to give you accessories. You're going to have a lot of them. I got like four or five little Tupper, um, uh, Tupperware containers over there just filled with GoPro accessories. I'm just saying, trust me, over time, you will buy a lot of them. And to have something that you can put all those accessories in when you're traveling, trust me, that is a win. It's a win. So now also on this GoPro, I do have one other accessory and that is the GoPro Media Mod. Now the GoPro itself is $4.96 for just the GoPro and that bundle that we talked about. Now the Media Mod is an additional $79.99 and I was joking about it last night. I purchased this, this media mod just so I could connect this GoPro to my switchers. And I literally paid $80 just to be able to plug one HDMI cable into this camera so I could use it like I'm using the, the Osbot Meet right now. And, you know, it's, it's funny because Osbot not only sent me a camera that can work with my switcher, they also sent me a device that I probably could have used to just connect the GoPro 2, which is their UVC to HDMI, you know, adapter. Oh, anyway, anyway, media mod, right? Two microphones uh, in the back here. You got these three little flaps. One is for HDMI, which is the mini HDMI. The other one is for USB-C. And then you also have 3.5. You want to plug in a microphone. And these little flaps do uh, close really nicely to keep anything from getting inside. This is going to provide a little bit of protection for the GoPro. Um, you have two cold shoes, one here under the microphone, one here on the very top. And uh, yeah, it doesn't block the screen in any kind of way. Now your GoPro feet from your actual GoPro just pop out the bottom of this. And that's what I'm using to connect to this uh, snap mount. I didn't put the snap mount in the carousel. I will put it back because people keep asking me about this magnetic mount that I use uh, for the GoPro uh, that allows me to just connect it and de you know, disconnect it from uh, my little different mounts. So if you guys got any questions about those, uh, if you're interested in this, I will put it in, in the uh, uh, carousel tomorrow morning. So it will be in there, the snap mounts, but you can find them here on Amazon as well. There's like two different kits. There's a pro kit that comes with a lot of accessories. And then there's a very basic kit that just comes with the uh, snap mount itself. And then it comes with a back plate and it comes with a lanyard. But like I said, I'll put this in the carousel tomorrow afternoon. Um, hopefully nothing will happen with the Wi-Fi again, and we'll be able to talk about this uh, more in depth. Uh, Samantha's in the house. Welcome, Samantha. How are you tonight? All right, guys. So that is my GoPro Hero 10 and some of its accessories. Now, the reason why I wanted to use the GoPro or use, say, for instance, one of these little tiny cameras is because the B camera that I normally use here in the studio is rather on the heavy side. You know, it's not too heavy to manage, 
but it is heavy in the grand scheme of things. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. I use the Sony a7 III with a vertical grip inside of a small rig cage using it with a um, uh, Sigma 24-70 to 2.8 lens. Let me just grab the camera and show you guys what I'm talking about. <clears throat> All right, guys, so this is the camera, okay? This is the camera I usually use when I'm showing you guys things on my desk, okay? So this upper upper portion of the camera here is the body of the camera. That's the one that is 1998 just for the body. This is a 25 megapixel camera, full frame sensor. So you're gonna get some really good photos and videos off of this camera. This is the first Sony body I ever purchased when I first moved over from Nikon to Sony. This is the first camera I bought. Now, I did add a virtual grip to this one as well. That allows me to add a second battery and also have a second set of buttons and dials down here on this, um, this portion of the camera as well. Now, I did mention that I do have it inside of this small rig cage. This is an all metal cage. Uh, very similar to the cage that I showed you guys earlier for the Yolo Box Pro. Now, the um, vertical grip <clears throat> is $348 for the vertical grip. And if you want two batteries, you will have to buy an additional battery for this as well. The lens that's on here is the Sigma 24 to 70. This is a 2.8 lens. This is a very nice lens. This is a heavy rig. You know, it's not super heavy because I have heavier cameras, but in comparison, this is my B camera and I can compare it with this. So you guys pick one. Which you think would be easier to work with? And I'm going to just grab it and show you guys things. I'm just saying. Which you think is going to be the easiest solution? Even if I was using it with the GoPro. You know, even with the GoPro, um, this is still, you know, if I, even if I was using the GoPro instead, okay? Still a huge difference between, you know, using these cameras for the same job. Now, I did go back to this camera because of the fact that it can zoom in and zoom out, right, with this lens. This is a, you know, a telephoto lens. The GoPro doesn't have the ability to zoom in and zoom out, and neither does the, um, the Osbot Meet. I have to pick it up physically and move it back and forth. Now, if I switch to this camera angle right now, <clears throat> as you guys can see here, now we're on that camera angle. Of course, I could just, you know, steady the camera and then zoom in on something. You know, maybe I just want to show you guys, you know, the Osbot little PTZ camera here or maybe, you know, this camera, the GoPro here. I could easily hold this camera in my hand and still show you guys things, but it's more convenient to have a, a much smaller camera to be able to do that. Now, this lens does really well when it comes to focusing really close on objects, right? So even like this, uh, let me see if I can get it to focus right now, because I just said that it's probably not gonna act up. It's gonna act up now. But you guys get the idea. I could really get close to things and really show you details because of this lens. The quality of the lens is superb. You know, even looking at this microphone, look at the details that you're seeing on this microphone, right? Even if I zoom in, zoom out a little bit and then still push in, look at the details of the microphone. You know, there's people that own these microphones that probably don't look at them this close up, but I'm just showing you there's something that you can do with one of these cameras, right? And this type of lens. So, yeah. So yeah, I'm a big fan of having this type of, you know, setup, but do you really need it? Not so much. <clears throat> it's not a must have, guys. It's not. You can get started with whatever you have. If you have a smartphone and a set of earbuds or, or, or headphones that came with it, start with that. You know, if you want to, you know, eventually go to like one of these little smaller cameras, just connecting it to your computer, rock with that. Whatever you have that's within your budget, you know, get the gear that's going to work for you, that's going to allow you to create the kind of content that you want to create and seek out people that will give you good advice and not just be trying to sell you things that, you know, you can decide on your own, you know, what's going to be best for you. But you want people who have actually used these items and are not just throwing them out there that are talking about them. I use these things literally on a daily basis in some form or another. So, you know, if you got any questions, that's what I'm here for. And it costs you nothing. All right, let's roll. What's next? So now the next thing in the carousel, guys, is one of my drawing tablets. Now, this is a tablet I use for my photo retouching for some graphic work. Uh, a little bit of video work and even some audio at times. 
And that's this. This is the Wacom and Tools Pro tablet. This is the medium. Now it does come with a pro pen. So this is the magic part of the, the, the tablet, you know, is the pen itself, because this has like 8,000 levels of pen pressure sensitivity. This is the tablet that I use when I'm doing like Photoshop retouching, dodging and burning, you know, when I'm doing uh, frequency separation, liquefy manipulations, you know, things like that. This is what I'm using. This tablet, this pen with, you know, my, my keystrokes already programmed into these eight programmable buttons. I have this multi-selection ring where I can easily just tap on there and then bring up another menu and choose another tool and then just get right back to work. I'm telling you, these things speed up your workflow tremendously, okay? Now, this tablet comes in three different sizes. You can get a small, medium, and large. I have the medium. There is a large. The large is going to be better suited for somebody who's into drawing and art. Now, Wacom also makes a bunch of tablets that are just like, like iPads, you know, to have a screen, okay? And that's going to be far more advanced than this tablet. I personally don't need anything like that. I have used those before in the past. They didn't really impress me that much that I wanted to invest in them. But I am a big, big fan of this specific type of tablet, and it works great for me. Now, you can get this tablet here on Amazon for $369.56, a uh, high-quality tablet. The medium and the large, over time, um, you know, I was concerned about being able to remove, uh, replace the surface. You can replace this surface uh, pad here on the medium and large, but you can't, unfortunately, on the small. So if you are concerned, like I am, about something like that, you know, way down the road, then um, go with the medium or go with the large. Now, the medium works well for me because it kind of really matches up with everything that's already on my desk. So if you guys see what my desk looks like here, let me see if I can give you guys a good angle. So let's say this is my desk, okay? So you can see... I have this this 15 inch monitor here. I have the Yolo box here. Of course, I have the, the iPad, the M1 uh, 13 inch um, uh, MacBook Air. I got the iPad right underneath it. Of course, the Rodecaster Pro is here on the desk. So when I'm traveling and I'm transporting some of this gear, I'm looking for things that are pretty much about the same size. So they'll all kind of fit in the same bag, if that makes sense. Not exactly in the same bag, but a similar bag where I can put everything together and I don't have to have, you know, some really super large bag just for one item. So I kind of always have that in my mind mentally when I'm looking at things, how well are they going to travel together without being destroyed? So yeah, that's another reason why I went with the medium. <clears throat> All right, so what's next? So next is this lighting kit uh, from LumaCube. Now, LumaCube did send me these lights, guys. Uh, I didn't pay for them, but I will give you my opinion on these light panels. I actually did a video on them earlier today. <clears throat> so this kit comes with a number of accessories. You get this little... Um, this little suction cup, it has a little quarter 20 screw that you can use to attach to different components of this kit. Then you get the actual light panel itself, the diffusion material that goes over the light. That's what allows it to create that very soft light. You have this ball head mount right here. You have this adjustable light stand. It's about 30 something inches. Of course, you also have this tripod. This tripod will collapse onto the column of the light stand. So it will, you know, fold up really nicely. You'll be able to easily travel with this. This is a bicolor light. That means that it can be adjusted from 3200 to 5600 Kelvin. This light can also double as a power bank. That means you can plug a USB cable into this and use this light. If you're not using it as a light and just want to just charge some another device with it, you could plug your phone, you could plug your tablet into this and actually leach power off of this little bat, I mean this little light. So it doubles as a light slash power bank slash all the other things that you would imagine this light would be able to do. All of the different accessories are interchangeable. You can detach the tripod from this. You can detach the, the uh, ball head mount. You can add the suction cup. You can just interchange these however you want to use them. You know, if you want to use the suction cup to mount the light, maybe behind a monitor facing you, or maybe you want to mount this up on like a mirror where the light is going to be facing you. Maybe you're doing like a... Um, I don't know, a makeup haul, makeup tutorial, or cooking tutorial, whatever you want to do. If you don't have a place where you can set it down with the tripod, then you could, you know, find a flat surface and use the suction cup. So this kit, uh, again, was sent to me by LumaCall, I mean LumaCube, but you can purchase it here on Amazon, guys, for $99.99 for this little kit. Check it out.
Jeffy's in the house. What up, Jeffy? What it do, bro? All right, here we go. Here we go. So the next light, the next light in the carousel, guys, are these lights right here. These, these I did purchase myself. Um, these lights are from a company called um, uh, Rolino. Now, you can purchase just one light by itself, and this is pretty much the box that it comes in, or you can purchase a kit. And I wound up purchasing the kit later because I didn't realize there was a kit. So the first one I bought was just the single light by itself, but the kit comes with two of the light panels. It comes with the, um, the uh, cold shoe uh, adapter for the cold shoe or a light stand. It comes with two light stands. It comes with a nice little travel case. It also comes with two wall plugs, and it comes with you know everything you need to get started to use these lights. Now, these are bicolor lights also. That means you can adjust them from 3200 to 5600 Kelvin. The light panel itself is much larger. I'm going to show you the light panel here in a second. It has 192 LED bulbs. It has a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. This thing is a little workhorse. I've been using them here in my studio for probably the last four months. Um, let me show you guys what this light looks like. So let me switch over here real quick. Uh, there we go. So here's one of the light panels up here over my A camera. And then here's another one right here next to my desk. You guys can see the battery. I can't pull this camera around too far because the cable's not that long, but you guys can see how thin this light is. And it's just putting some light here on my desk so I can show you guys things. So like my, a ca my B camera's here, it's just facing the desk. So when I set something up on the desk, you know, I'm able to show it to you guys and the light uh, is being produced by this little light panel. So it's just putting just a little touch of light on the desk. So if you guys are looking for some lights or maybe somebody else you know might be looking for a set of lights, I think it is definitely worth your interest to take a look at these Rolino lights. They're very nice. And um, for the kit, you know, for $135.99, you're going to get the two light panels, the two adapters, the light stands, the wall plugs. You're going to get the travel case. You know, I mean, you guys can see how large these light panels are and they're by color. So, you know, you have all of that flexibility built into that little kit. So, you know, it's a win. Now, the next thing in the carousel is actually the little monitor that I bought. And that's what I was talking about earlier. Let me sh see if I can show you guys this monitor. So this is the monitor here on my desk. It's a 15 inch, 15.8 inch monitor. Uh, it's right here next to these boxes. Now I purchased this monitor myself maybe a month and a half ago here on Amazon. It was $189.99. Right now this 15 inch monitor 1080p panel is $159.99. Now this can be powered from USB-C. So if you do have like a MacBook or a computer uh, and you have a USB port, like a USB-C port or Thunderbolt port, you can power this with it. Now I currently have this monitor connected to the YOLO box right here. So the monitor is not receiving power from the YOLO box. I actually have an additional uh, USB-C cable plugged into it that's getting giving it power from the floor, from my, my uh, power bank down there on the floor. But what I liked about this monitor, and I still do, is, is travel friendliness, right? So if you guys notice, it's upright. It has a little stand. The stand is magnetic that connects to the back of it, kind of like some of those stands for iPads. Now, also, the base of this stand doubles as a screen protector. So when you're traveling with this monitor, you can just fold it up, cover up the screen, drop it in your bag, and it's going to be pretty secure. You don't have to worry about as much uh, of the screen getting scratched up. I am a huge fan of that. And you guys can see, again, it's right about the same size as the MacBook and some of the other devices that I might be traveling with, like my iPad. So everything pretty much fits in the same bag, Pelican case, whatever it is that I'm gonna be traveling with. I can put all of these different pieces of gear right in the uh, same device, okay? Now, uh, the next thing that's on the carousel is actually this little stand. I'm gonna see if I can move the yellow box out of the way a little bit. You guys can see there's a MacBook Air back here beyond all of these crazy cables. Um, this is the MacBook Air 13 inch. It is on this stand that was sent to me from Lumacall. Uh, this stand comes with uh, three components. You get the bottom plate, the top plate. You also get the center column. You get uh, 10 screws, an Allen key. It'll take you no time to assemble this thing. This little stand can rotate around 180 degrees. It's got a nice little metal lip. The whole thing is like a metal alloy, but it has this additional lip here to prevent your laptop from sliding off. There is uh, rubber pads on the top of the, uh, the portion where your laptop sits. 
And also those rubber pads are underneath to keep it from sliding around on your desk whenever you swivel this thing around, okay? Now, again, it's a metal alloy, so it's going to last a long time. This is designed to support um, the width of a 17-inch uh, laptop. So, of course, it could easily accommodate this 13-inch MacBook Air. And I've used this with my OG uh, Rodecaster Pro. I had it on this thing when I first got this stand. I had the Rodecaster Pro up high like this, and it was just a nuisance because I had to reach so far every time I played, wanted to play a sound effect or change something. So I wound up putting it right down here on the desk where the Rodecaster Pro 2 is now. But the Rodecaster Pro 1 got moved down here, and then I moved the, I, uh, the MacBook up here on this little stand. I'm still thinking about getting a second one. I don't know if I want to, you know, just get a second one or just, you know, change the way I have the desk set up. I don't know. All right, guys, so we've got one more stand we're going to take a look at. Now, that stand uh, from Lumacall is 2527. Now, this stand I actually purchased myself. Uh, I purchased this for my iPad, my 12.9-inch iPad Pro. Uh, this one also has a similar type of rubber pads underneath it. It's got this rubber uh, inside of this lip here. You also have it on the back here to protect it from scratching it. This thing is so over-engineered. It's just high-grade aluminum. You can easily adjust the height. You can push it back. You can you know, adjust it you know, for... Uh, portrait orientation or landscape. Now, I just have this sitting on my desk kind of, you know, low like this, just so I could just set the iPad here on the, the stand and I can be able to read, you know, your guys' comments and also, you know, scroll back and forth through the carousel. So I just have it like right here on the opposite side of this uh, Yolo box and right next to this fan. So let me show you guys where that's at. So I just have the iPad like right here so I can scroll back and forth through the comments I can also select different things down here in the carousel. So like, like the next item I'm going to select is these Geniverse home power batteries. Uh, but yeah, that's how I'm using my iOS device, you know, for this Amazon live stream. But that stand makes it really easy for me to be able to do that. And you can get one of these metal stands, guys, here on Amazon for $19.79. All right, so let's move on with a couple more items we got in the carousel. And that is these uh, solar powered batteries. Let me rotate this camera around. All right, guys, so starting off uh, the solar batteries, both of these were sent to me by Geniverse. Um, this one here is the Home Power One. This one is a 1,000 watt uh, with a 2,000 watt crank. It does have AC and DC out. On the AC side of things, you have uh, your 110 voltage uh, three AC plugs. And then on DC, you have USB-Cs at the very top. You have two of those. You also have your USB-As. The bottom one is actually a quick charge. And then you have your 12-volt uh, slash 10-amp uh, plug that's like your cigarette lighter type of plugs. Now, to charge these, you can charge these with the included wall plug or the cigarette lighter plug, or you can get the kit with the uh, solar panels, okay? Now, these will store their power up to a year, and they should be able to provide you uh, power for up to about seven days, okay? Now, the kit that I got did come with the solar panels, but if you're interested in just the battery alone, you can purchase the battery by itself for $8.99. And if you want it with these solar panels, uh, that's these 100 watt solar panels that you see here behind the kit. Those uh, with that kit, it would be $14.99. And that will get you two of the 100 watt solar panels and the uh, Home Power One battery as well. And then right next to it is the Home Power Two Plus. So let me tilt this camera back a little bit so you guys can see the full height of this device. So you guys can see it is like three times the height of the Home Power One. Now this one is a 2200 watt um, battery. It does have a 4400 watt surge. When it comes to the power out uh, ports, you have uh, four AC ports and you have um, five, basically five uh, uh, DC ports. So you have two USB-Cs, two USB-As, and you also have the uh, 12 volt uh, plug as well. And then of course, on the uh, AC side of things, you have four of those 100 watt AC plugs. Now this one is much heavier than the Home Power One, but it does come with this little caddy that you can set this thing on and it has like these little wheels so you'll be able to roll it around. Uh, one of the things I do like about it and right at the base, it has this little light that can come on if you want this light to be on while it's charging. 
Um, the handle for this one is at the very top. You would pick this up kind of like a, um, maybe like a bucket or something. There is also a handle for the Home Power One. That handle just flips up and it has nice little rubber padding on it and you'll be able to hold that one and walk with it as well. So the battery only is $19.99 if you're interested in that solar power battery or you can get the kit. The kit is $29.99 for the kit. That's gonna give you the, uh, the Home Power Two Plus which is the 2200 watt battery. It also comes with two 200 watt solar panels. Those solar panels are twice the width of the solar panels. I'm sorry, twice the length of those uh, solar panels for the Home Power One. Now the Home Power uh, Two Plus does charge much faster than the Home Power One. You know, check it out. So if you guys are interested in these devices or you have any questions about them, of course, as I always say in every one of my streams, I have these devices literally right here at hand. Right now, the Home Power 2 Plus is actually powering the uh, Yolo Box Pro. You guys see this cable right now is going into the Yolo Box Pro. It's actually providing power to it, keeping it topped off. And that power is coming right now from the uh, Home Power uh, 2. Uh, and these are both Geniverse uh, solar power batteries, guys. So again, like I said, if you have any questions, you know, come on through, ask your boy. That's what I'm here for. So many of you already know I am usually live twice a day at noon and then again um, at 7 p.m. Of course, I wasn't live today at noon because of the Wi-Fi issues I was having. But I'll be back to my normal schedule, guys, tomorrow at noon. So I'll be in here. Our goal is to try and hit that 10 followers a day. So if that means if it's, you know, five people in the daytime, five people at night, that hits 10 because I calculate from, you know, the whole day, we'll do a gift card giveaway. So as long as we hit those numbers, you know, each day I will do a gift card giveaway every day we hit those numbers, okay? So if you got some friends, bring them on over. Y'all know how y'all do it. Y'all be dropping them things on Discord and this place and that place. You do what you do. I'm going to do what I do. I definitely want to reward you guys for hanging out with me and doing the things we do. But of course, guys,